Bringing the energy. That's what we do. Bringing the energy. Podcast number five. We're back. You missed us. I know you did. They did. I'm Jack. I'm Pat. Still eligible. Welcome back. Welcome back. We took a snow day last week. Texas. It got hit pretty hard. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Um, we've got a great show for you lined up. A couple of appreciate you. Um, nice, little, nice little interview with the Buckeye. Uh, Zach Schwartz running Ohio State. Social for football. And he's just a leader in all he does. I mean, they're setting the standard. No doubt about it. We've got some cool stories. Uh, a nice little Bill Belichick story. Another good Urban Meyer story. Um, you're going to want to stick around. This guy's Pretty cool. Even even though he's a Buckeye? I mean, that makes him even cooler. I don't know about that, but so wasn't where I was going, but okay. I mean, you just are surrounded by Buckeyes. Right I am. Now. How did I end up here? I don't know. How did how did I end up here is uh, the real question. Also a valid question. You know what? But we're here. Okay. So let's embrace it. Yes. Okay. So, snowstorm, it hit hard, but it was honestly good for us. I think we need a nice little refresher. Um, we come in here and we're just grind in the studio all, all, all every week. Um, so it's nice to be outside. Nice little taste of home. Had a little, little snow day. A little snow day. I grew up on snow days. As did I. If you can't fake snick, sick, you just count on the snow day. Yeah. Good for two to three a year in Northeast Ohio. Yeah. And now we're adults and, and, we, and we get one. We got locked out of the office and... Yeah. Ended up with a TikTok account. So Yeah. Well, I'm not the TikTok kind of sore, but I understand its importance. Um, we got, I don't know, a handful out. And yeah, we're gonna keep that thing rolling. Yeah. So follow us at still eligible. The I user, came up with the name. The username should not shock anyone, but it actually it wasn't stolen. It was available. Yeah, it was. We've had some, we've had some usernames that we've had to uh get from yeah. people or twitter was some russian man had a twitter <laughs> like it was crazy <laughs> he did, like it was like just some crazy tweets he just had it and luckily we got it we got it it's ours now yeah now's a good time to say follow us on social media yes. at still eligible youtube as well follow us subscribe like i honestly don't know how to say that there's like a rhythm but we don't have it i think you have it so yeah. By the way, um, I got a couch. I was worried about that, so I'm happy for you. Mm-hmm. I know you got a couch, but it's good to tell the people you got a couch. Yeah, I you, sat. On you the couch. sat on it. It's actually an excellent couch. Thank you. Uh, Elite couch. Your TV, I assume, is mounted now. Unmounted, but my roommate's parents are coming this weekend, and his dad allegedly knows how to mount TVs. So are they coming solely? Yeah, no, solely to Mount TVs. Okay, that's what I figured. We flew him in from Cincinnati. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Uh, this weekend, we did something for the first time, actually, which is kind of crazy. We have never watched a Michigan versus Ohio State game <laughs> <laughs> together. Yeah. We we worked the game in Ann Arbor on the sidelines, but we've never watched one in person. It was a great game. It wasn't a great outcome. It was not. The one in Ann Arbor was a great outcome. For you. The yes. wings were good. The outcome was not. Yeah. So Michigan pulled out the win. How did it feel to uh, to lose? It's never good to lose to the team up north. Um, but it was an excellent game, nonetheless. Um, I think it was one of the best games in college hoops all year. Uh, being down by two at half when you guys were just going off from three, I mean, I I felt like I felt pretty good about it, and it, it came it came down to the wire. So, it did. If, at the end of the day, it was a good game. Um, you can win, you can win now, and we'll just win in the Big Ten tournament. So, sure. Like the cool part about football is we just beat you once to get it over with. But now it's like you know, give them a little hope, and then we'll come in and actually that's win it that's up. what that was giving hope. Whatever, whatever helps you sleep. I'm cool. <laughs> okay, well. I'm just uh, I'm happy to be on the opposite end of the outcome. No, it's I'm good. so used to losing. It's good. You so, needed yeah, that. I did. I really did. Um, you needed that. Hunter Dickinson, to me, was a stud as a freshman. Just got to give him a quick shout out. Yeah. I'm, uh, he, was, he was a big recruit and kind of got big. lost in the shuffle a little bit there. He's in terms a big of person. People well. talking about him. I feel like he, he's one of the best freshmen. Right he's now. unreal, first of all. 
Second of all, it does not look like a freshman. No, it does not look like a freshman at all. He That he, kid could steal my lunch money today. Yeah. It might be a little questionable with NIL, but <laughs> he could take my money. I yeah. would I would probably give it to him. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd absolutely give it to him. Yeah, you wouldn't really. He would, he would take just walk it from you. Me, like, yeah. just, just take it. You, you carry. The, you, you want the pin for my debit you, card you, while you're at you, it? Do you carry cash around for your lunch money? or No. That's okay. why I said the debit yeah, card. Yeah, debit card. Two Got seconds. It. Got it. Okay. Well, oh, shout out to him. Shout out, shout out to him. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think in terms of everyone is saying that Gonzaga and Baylor are the favorites? Do you think that Michigan and Ohio State? I mean, I would love to see that be the final four and for us to meet in the championship. I mean, at least – Ohio State, but if you make it there, that'd be cool too. Mm-hmm. That'd be a good storyline. Um, I mean, I think Gonzaga and Baylor are clearly great at what they do. They're they're the top two teams, as as you see in the polls. Yes. Um, Ohio State did not move in the polls, so there's that. So that's pretty cool. Even after the loss. No. Wow. So, I, I would love for that to be the final four. Um, I don't know. I think Michigan obviously proved themselves, and they're like, I've heard people saying that now they're elite. Now they're one of the top three. Granted, they were already part of, part of the top three, but maybe that one two is not one two three, and I'm like, you know, we only lost by five, so why don't we just make that a one two three four? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty close at the top. I, I feel like Big Ten is always a strong conference, but this year is kind of nuts. So I'm I'm happy that our two respective teams are uh, nuts pulling their weight. Go Bucks! Wow, see what you did there. You did it. I just highlighted it. I, okay, I mean, any any time I say it, I feel like uh. You find a way to turn it into Ohio State, so I've just learned to accept it. That's what we do. I don't know what you want me to say to that. So for any new listeners or Zach Swartz super fans who just followed us because he retweeted the podcast, we like to do a segment. Thanks for the retweet, by the way. Called Appreciate You. Appreci- I appreciate th- you. This, this originated from your catchphrase because yeah. you're very appreciative after interviews. You, like tell, you, back. You, you tell people you, you appreciate appreciate you. You appreciate them. If you give me some of your time, the least I could do is appreciate you in return. The the manners and kindness of this man. All right, just hop into it. Sure. Juwan Howard. So, beat Ohio State. Managed a COVID break. They are performing at an extremely high level. I know you saw this, the clip of him picking Mike Smith up off the floor. I did see it. Amazing. Uh, I'd like to read a tweet from Michigan walk-on C.J. Baird real quick. He said, I wasn't on the bench for this game, but I drove down to watch today in Columbus. First thing after a top-five win, Juwan Howard pointed to me in the stands and hit his chest. That's culture, and that's how he treats all of our players. I know you're going to love this hashtag. Go Blue. Do you think he was hitting his chest like, we did this without you. Or do you think he No, was I like, do not actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just you might be like, you lost your scholarship. <laughs> nah, that's mean. Uh but I thought that <laughs> I, I, I saw that tweet and uh I thought that was thought that was really cool. No, that's touching. He's a he's the a hashtag. great he's a he's yeah. He's a great, great genuine guy. Uh I've met him a couple of times. Great hire. Super happy to have him uh as the as the coach of Michigan basketball. So Juwan Howard. Appreciate you. I don't, but that's cool. Um, my first appreciate you. Appreciate you. No, appreciate you. My first appreciate you. Doesn't get out to a person or animal for the first time. An app, rather. The Clubhouse app. We're going to talk about Clubhouse in a little bit um, with our interview. But um, it's something that I found very interesting, very intriguing. I enjoy it. I went on a run the other night. Um and listen to basically it's like these rooms that you can get in with a bunch of people. Um, obviously, I'm in like the sports creative ones or you know stuff that's all around sports. And it's just like I don't know. You hop in, it's like a phone call with a bunch of different people. There's admins and there's people that are just listening and stuff like that. But um, the other day I was listening to Ohio State football put on one um, talking about Black History Month and, and some of the football players came on and, and talked about their experiences and it was so like personable. It was awesome. Um, and I went into a different one and. It was Eli Manning talking with Justin Tuck, and like it was crazy. Like I just hopped into that one, and then uh, then I hopped into one with all these NBA writers who were just they just host a clubhouse on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and watch NBA games and just talk. 
and like people can come in and ask questions or you know they're giving analysis way better than I am. And hey, you're great. Don't well, don't, uh, don't sell yourself short. Triple threat. Yeah. And I don't know. It's been really cool. It's really like people is just like a conversation. I've reached out to some people. Hopefully, some people that we'll have on the podcast one day. And it's like a weird way to make connections. And um, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a horrible texter. The worst. But I love phone calls. Granted, like my phone's always on silent. But if I see that you call it, I'll call you back. Or if I catch me at the right time, I'll answer. But I love phone calls. And this is just another version of a phone call. How cute is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I've, I've learned to... Uh, I haven't learned your, your whole system with phones and, and how you operate, but... Um, I just explained it. Well, it kind of just... It, it's... It's so it, clubhouse. It's new for me. It's clubhouse. For me. I just wanted to say it's new for me. Appreciate you. Uh, little little segue action here for you, since I know you appreciate those. I would I would say you're a leader in the clubhouse. Bang bang. And my next appreciate you. <laughs> Can't believe I just said that, but I did. <laughs> Max Homa. Oh, the Homa. The uh, homie. Missing missing that putt on eighteen. That was rough. Not ideal. Not ideal. Lipped it. Totally redeemed himself. I got a I got a tweet from Dylan underscore Dethier. Oh, good old Dylan Dethier. Max Homa says his wife called him between the missed three footer and the playoff to remind him of a mindset he'd been focusing on. Forgive quickly, which is what I try to do with you. I knew I, saw, I knew where this quote was going, and I was gonna make that comment, but you beat me to it, so you win. Well, Appreciate you. Appreciate you. No, uh, Max Homa, that was sweet, though. It was. It was. It was Bad. The, the chip from under the tree. The chip from under the tree. Wild. That could be a children's book. <laughs> <laughs> you should write it. Maybe I will. You should You should make some children's books. I'd love to see that. Or just books in general, maybe novels, novellas. Mine would be a picture book. Yeah. Got to start somewhere. All right. Well, there you go. I also, I also have a tweet. I pulled some tweets this week in case you uh, haven't really picked up on it. I picked up on it. Uh, from Max, he said he spent over a dozen years trying to get Tiger to give him a high five at Riviera, and today Tiger handed him a trophy. Ha, 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 what a world. Hashtag golf. Hashtag's electric. That's sweet, though. I mean, Tiger's unreal. The goat. Hope he's, hope he's recovering, by the way. Yeah, that was, that was sad news. And yeah. We hope that's going well. Yeah, but great for Max. Max, story nonetheless. appreciate you. Cool. I mean, I, I think uh, we should probably move on to, like, the next segment. So no, this one I is think gonna... I've got one more. Wait, what? We're doing something new here. Are we? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't run this by you, but for the first time in Appreciate You history, I'm pulling out the red flag, and I'm challenging – and appreciate you from a previous week. And uh, we mentioned it earlier, but Punxsutawney Phil ruined my life this past week, and a lot of people's in Dallas yeah. for that matter. Yeah, I said, you know, the best part about moving to Texas is, like, this Punxsutawney Phil thing doesn't make a difference to me. Mm -hmm. Turns out it does. Um, he hit us hard. So um, I challenge that. I take it back. We had a... I had a, a roller coaster of emotions with this man. So we'll circle back next February, February 2nd. It's his day, not my day, clearly. So um, you win this round, Phil. I'll be back. From from enemy to friend and back to enemy. Yep. So I think that was a pretty solid intro. I do too. We've got a, a great interview lined up. We're going we're gonna to hop into that here in a second. Zach Swartz, absolute legend. We had some fun. Um I don't know. I love talking to Ohio State. I know, like after this. Oh, I'm 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 well aware. <laughs> yeah, I do it for days. But it was a great first guest. Good dude. Knows his stuff. Knows how to make a a great trailer, a great video. He's more than a trailer. He's in person. A great content creator, but but more importantly, a great person. Absolutely. So, we're gonna take a break. Catch us out on the other side. What is going on? This is Still Eligible. I am Jack. I'm Pat. And we appreciate you. Follow us on social media at Still Eligible. Subscribe on YouTube. 
And we're going to hop back into the podcast because I don't know what else to say. You're fine. All right. We are here with Zach Swartz, Director of Creative Media for the Ohio State football team. Absolute beast. He is setting the standard across the NCAA. No question about that. Uh, Zach, thanks for coming on today. I'm excited. Inaugural guest, I'm I'm told. Oh, yes. Absolutely. We we figured we start with the best and uh that's how we that's how we got you, right? Well start somewhere and then <laughs> build on it is normally how things go, I think. But Th- thank you for coming on. Uh obviously as a Michigan fan, this is this is kinda tough for me, but I, I'm a huge fan of your work, not so much of the team that you work for. So <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you having me and uh we may have a little back and forth. I, I made sure to hang the gold pants though behind me. <laughs> you can see those, so you get a new one of those every year. It doesn't even, I mean, at this point, who cares how many you have? Every year except this last year. Well, that's true. That's true. Well, Zach, um, tell us a little bit about how you got to Ohio State. I know you uh, started out in the MAC, like myself, uh, head down, headed down to Arkansas. Um, it's more than that. And tell us how you got to where you are and, and, and start with that. Oh, man. Um, uh, I mean, I always, whenever I'm asked this question, I kind of just go back to um, – when I looked at colleges, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Like when I, I always tell the story, like of when I was a kid, my brother and I used to play, you know, NCAA video games, baseball video games in the basement. And then we'd finish it and I would run to the computer and I'd write a game recap with like a dateline, <laughs> <laughs> like by Zach Swartz. And I still have them. My yeah. parents kept them and I still have a few of those at home. Um, so I was kind of like, I, I guess I'll try journalism and, uh, you know, looked around and applied to a few places and, um, Ohio university was right down the road, you know, it was far enough from home, but close enough to home and had a really good journalism program. Turned out they also had a really good sport management program, which, uh, I didn't actually finish with a minor or anything in sport management, but I took a lot of classes and got to meet a lot of contacts there. That's great. Um, and so, you know, I, I really had no idea what I was going to do going into college. And then when I left, uh, I still had no idea what I was going to do. Um, and luckily I had a contact down at the university of Arkansas, uh, the AD down there, his niece, it was my next door neighbor growing up in, in Pickerington, Ohio, suburban Columbus and reached out to him and they were starting a graduate assistant program. Well, really just really a program in general, uh, called that they called new media. And at that time, like new I mean, media I, was I, just I, starting. Yeah. I mean, it it was, like video and we did like live blogs of games. Um, We just really started tweeting like right around then, like covering games, you know, like that. And a lot of website, you know, video, you know, we, we didn't post natively to social media back then. Like you used, if you, you know, it was really Facebook and really we were just starting to use Twitter and you would uh, use social media to drive traffic to your website. That's great. And uh, yeah, weird to think about it. Then, the SEC network probably about two, one, two, three years into my time down there kind of really began to launch. And, and so they started to invest in the programs. Uh, Arkansas didn't have a lot, didn't have a lot of state of the art video equipment at the time. And so the schools that didn't have the state of the art stuff, the SEC would, and ESPN would invest more. in. so they, they put $8 million into a big production studio down at Arkansas. And uh, that's where I really started learning how to do video was in grad school and, and in my first couple of years. And then, um, you know, did a lot of stuff, social media, uh, like video board productions, did some producing, graphics, replay, all that stuff for some SEC network broadcasts. And then when, uh, when Ohio State and Coach Meyer, you know, created this position, it was kind of a no-brainer to apply. I reached out to some people and through just pure luck, really knowing the right people to get in the door. At least I had some good conversations and they brought me on. So it was a homecoming, uh, not, not hard or not easy to uh, say no to. Yeah, absolutely. So where was that, where was that jump for you from, like you said, starting out, it was tweeting to promote the website and all this stuff. And now you're making these crazy trailers and crazy videos and stuff like that. And I mean, the broadcast and all that, that's, that's nothing like what you're doing now. So where did, that happened from from Arkansas to applying for this job at Ohio State. 
I mean, I was, I did some trailers and things like that down at Arkansas. We didn't have, we had all, you know, at that time and really a lot now, uh, a lot of the SEC teams have separate departments for kind of the creative social media video recruiting stuff and then the, the live broadcast team. At that time, we really didn't at Arkansas. We had, we were the one production group. And so we didn't have uh, mirrorless cameras and, and really uh, like cinema style lenses or anything like that. So we were shooting with, you know, broadcast quality cameras. <laughs> and so it was kind of tough to like try to make, try to translate it's that into social. Yeah. And so long story short, when I took this job, I, I definitely tried to sell myself as somebody who helped start that, that program from the start at Arkansas, uh, build, build that up and that I was creative, but I hadn't touched a mirrorless camera. I, again, the theme that I feel like is keeps popping up is that I had, I, I keep having no idea what I'm going to do next. And, yeah. uh, I don't, I, you just kind of try to figure it out. But I think, I think what, one of the things that they really liked was that I was from Columbus and I was an Ohio state guy and that I, uh, you know, wanted to be here and that yeah. I would be here for a while. So, um, I was lucky. And then, you know, just getting here and buying, you know, kind of buying into the culture under coach Meyer and getting to be a part of the team. I grew up watching it really, really motivated me to want to, you know, learn and, and to be really good at it. And so I probably put a lot more effort, um, and time into this place than maybe I would have anywhere else just because I was already bought in and loved this place. Yes. Yeah, so when you say like bought into the culture of coach Meyer, I mean, I was around it and I know, He's an intense dude for sure, and the standard at Ohio State is next level. I mean, I came over from Miami, and I was used to literally standing next to the head coach on the sidelines taking pictures of him, and then our first game day, I was like, well, you tell me I can't be right next to Urban or, or whatever. The standard is so high, and you guys see it through your videos, and you pushed me, whether you know it or not, like indirectly to to force myself to get better shots on game day. You know, if I want myself to be on Ohio State football social – it's got to it's got to be worth your time and whatnot. So how do you see that standard um, in one and in, in social and two, just living it and breathing it like that's that goes way beyond just you. I mean, way beyond the trainers. Every single person at Ohio State is expected to be elite at what they do. Yeah, I mean, I like when I I say it was a no brainer to come here. I, I knew I had to take this job. Um, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about even taken my career to the next level it was it was when Ohio State comes calling and I have a chance to go home I have to go do that and so I took it knowing that but I remember like before you know when I was moving up here and you know I was like kind of freaking out because I'm like I've never really been involved in recruiting I don't know how to I don't know what the the standard is for how to talk to families like I've I've never been in the football program at Arkansas we traveled with the football teams to away games and we shot home games but we weren't in the building and it was a little different than, than like it is here. And I like, I really freaked out. Like I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I know I can make videos, <laughs> but I don't know if I can just like be a part of a football program. And yeah. uh, it was really cool. Like, I don't know, just the culture here under coach Meyer and just the entire staff. Like it was, there was this weird combination of really intense, like it expected you to do a lot, but it was still like, I felt really comfortable coming in here and, and I felt really just, I liked being around the people. I liked the people I work with. There are a lot of really down to earth people at Ohio state that mm -hmm. are really good at what they do, but they still, I don't know. It, it was a culture that I just really loved. And, and coach Meyer just was such like, just such a good motivator for everybody. He really challenged people, um, you know, very, uh, purposely like we had, you know, in staff meetings and, um, he's not just like calling on players to answer questions. He's calling on staff members and making sure, you know, like bullet point by when do you ever get called out for anything? culture is oh absolutely what is everybody it? everybody <laughs> what, i mean uh, we would let's hear one <laughs> well so for for example like we had to learn the the parts of the culture so it's four to six a to b relentless effort competitive excellence and brotherhood and mm -hmm. if you didn't you know he would call on you what are, you know what are the three if you couldn't name it like that I wouldn't say you got yelled at or anything, but that was the expectation, yeah. you know, and, uh, <laughs> well, and people knew that and the players knew it and it, it held people. You were always on your toes, which made everybody better. And I had never had that, um, at, you know, in my past at Arkansas, it was, we worked with a lot of different sports. And so we were all kind of had to be self-driven and we yeah. had, 
you know, we, we had a really good culture and I love the people I worked with down there, really talented people and they're doing great things now, but like to be a, in a football culture where you're living it every single day, like you really had to like make it your life. And, uh, I did that, you know, I was single at the time, you know, and it was just kind of nice to be able to put everything I had into football. So as a, again, as a Michigan fan, this is kind of tough for me to ask you, but clearly Ohio state has super high standards. I think creatively, you know, I've looked around and I'm super impressed by your videos, by your team's videos. I know the fans have super high expectations. Um, I know like Jack has even told me like working with you has forced him to, to raise his game when he was at Ohio state. Can you, can you talk just a little bit about that? Like those standards and how you continue to maintain them or raise them? Well, yeah, before I do that though, like, by the way, like Jack's photos are, were insane and he set the standard for what we're trying to do. I know that. Don't do that. Don't hey, do that. No, they're really? great. I swear to God. <laughs> I, I, I'm off at photography. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm figuring it out. You know, you throw stuff in a light room and you can make it look good, but. That's all I do. You have a talent. <laughs> <laughs> you got the angles though too. Yeah. yeah. It's the game. Angles. Angles. Make people yeah. look like heroes. <laughs> um, so the question was trying to, uh, how, how do you how do you keep uh, being a leader in the social social world in the college landscape? Like you guys are at the forefront. It's it's really hard. Like, I mean, it's really really hard. Honestly, when I started, we got a lot of credit for things that I didn't think were very good. And a lot of what we did, a lot of the reason we got a lot of credit early on, like I, I think I think we made good work, and I think the trailers were always good, and I think uh, our social media stood out because we had a little bit of a personality, and we were still one of the first programs that had a football specific group that was uh, given a lot of behind the scenes looks we had a lot of access we had we had access um and we had um just people that were only dedicated to football and that made us stand out early on because not not everybody had that mm. and so it was less about honestly less about the quality of work and just if you gave people an inside look into the program of a practice or a locker room it was like that's really cool like nobody else could has that now everybody has mirrorless cameras. Everyone's out there running around. Everyone's hired like just these ridiculously creative uh, or ridiculously talented creative staffs. And so for me, honestly, like it's a constant challenge in this industry and it, it's never going to stop because it's just like anything in, in any sports, really it's a competition. And so for me, it's looking less at my competitors, so to speak, you know, I, I, I'm so inspired by everybody in this industry and I watch what they do, but I try to be, try to set, um, or try to look for inspiration outside of sports, because if I just look around at the other people in my industry, I'm just going to get really sad because there are, always, <laughs> there are always so many poor people that have so much more talent than I do. Like I, I just turned 33. So like, I'm like, I'm a grandpa in this industry right now. I and mean, there are 16 year old kids that I'm like, Ooh. How the heck? I mean, there are some really um, talented people. So yeah. it's a challenge. You want to keep going, but you also have to find ways to separate yourself outside of just yeah. creative stuff as well. And to be a leader, how do you? How do I bring up the young people that are working in our industry? How do I help our students get better? Uh, how do we kind of try to predict the future um, and apply what we're doing to that? That's kind of how we do it. It's not just about one thing. You kind of have to always be looking forward and try to figure out how to get ahead of the game a little bit. And one thing that I think is sweet is um, talk about not trying to look at others, but be a leader and try new things and stuff like that. And one of the coolest things I thought from this past week was um, the clubhouse you guys put on. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? I, I'm, I talked about clubhouse a little bit earlier in the podcast, and I think it's an awesome platform. We've had our own discussions on there, but I think using this, um, resource to bring these student athletes to life and and make it more av available to these fans. Like as a, as a Buckeye fan, my whole life, like if I could have had that opportunity to just listen in on a conversation with you know Troy Smith and Ted Ginn or whoever it may be as as a child or you know growing up as a Buckeye fan, like I couldn't even imagine that. Where you know we had I mean five six players in there just talking so openly about things that they're passionate about. And you want to touch on that maybe. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, just in general, um, it's interesting because it's kind of like I talked about earlier, you know, at the beginning of my time here at Ohio State, like we were one of the only few people that were probably in the locker room recording and, and given that access. And so it felt special because you were the only one doing it, even if mm -hmm. we could have put out really crappy work and people would have still loved it because it was <laughs> new and unique. Um, 
And so it's, it's really interesting now, like everybody is giving their players a voice and players are learning how to create their own social channels. Um, and so you have to, everybody's doing that. And so you have to find a, a different way to make it feel different at the, at the end of the day, the clubhouse is, it's the same concept as, as what we're doing right now. You know, mm -hmm. there are podcasts out there, there are, you know, people are releasing live videos, all kinds of stuff. But Clubhouse is just a different forum, and and it was it was really good foresight by my coworker Chris Harzopoulos, who like really bought into Clubhouse from the start, really saw a lot of potential, and it was his idea to um, bring the players on it and see if we can do, you know, could do something, and we talked about a few ideas, just, um, you know, around pretty basic concepts around Ohio State, just to try to launch it and get on there, and then, you know, we we were looking at what we wanted to do with Black History Month, and. Um, you know, we, these days you have to be like, it's so, it's kind of cliche these days, but you have to be real and authentic. Everyone says that. But for us, what that means is like, it, the more we can just let our players, not just be in front of the camera and talk and, and try to set them up and ask them questions, but the more we can just give them a mic and say, go, and yeah. then use our platform to promote it. Um, that was really our goal with that. And so it fit right in. Um, they did it, just the players did a phenomenal job. You know, you any time that you put um, eighteen to twenty-one year olds in front of a mic, you're gonna worry that something <laughs> might not come out the yeah. right way. But yeah. like, I don't know. We we trusted. We really trust our players, and we talk to them, and we know them, and the the players we picked, we had no second thoughts about. Um, yeah. And honestly, we didn't even pick them. We asked, you know, a group, uh, you know, to kind of just spread the word, and they they picked themselves. They came up with the questions really. It was Chris's great idea to get it set up. I helped the players get set up on the platform. Yeah. Um, we got the go ahead from, you know, higher ups to do it. And uh, once pretty much after that, once they were set up, they rolled with it and we just sat back and listened. So it was really, really cool. They did a phenomenal job and I, I learned a lot and uh, I thought they did a really good job just being very open and, and educational and insightful. Can you talk a little, I know you just mentioned, you know, the age of 18, like, can you talk a little bit about, seeing these guys come into the program at 18, being around them, having that access all the time, and then seeing them leave as a 22 or 23 year old, like what is that like to see the, the, the growth process throughout their careers? Yeah, that's like, that's, you know, one of my top two or three favorite things about my job. Now, when I first started, it was, it was about, Hey, like I want to make cool videos. I kind of want my stuff to be seen. Um, and now it's really less about the, like, once you've had, you know, everybody in this industry has had something pop off, go viral or get a lot of love for. And then <laughs> you've had a lot of stuff that just is awful and nobody likes. And it's a cycle and you realize that. So for me, it's less about, you know, as soon as I you know make a great video, I'm going to make one that doesn't get love. And so it's less about that. It's about trying to help the to get to know the players and try to teach them. And like, it's really cool to one, see them come in early you know, we're pretty involved in the recruiting process when they're on their visits or this past year on Zoom visits, you know, we're, we're meeting with them and their families and talking about what we do. Um, and so it's really cool. Like, like we have guys just pop in and they're like, man, this room is crazy. Like, this is so cool. Like, can you, and they'll come in and we'll teach them how to use Premiere and we'll teach them how to use a camera. You know, they'll grab, they'll grab my camera out of practice and, you know, run who's around the best with it. At Premier? Yeah, who's, who's the best? Oh man. The, be <laughs> I don't know the best the at worst? Premiere. <laughs> Um, but Jameson Williams is always trying to grab the camera. He's always yeah. about it. So, uh, he's really good. Seven banks is always wanting to grab the camera. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we got, we just got really good guys and they're interested in, we, we, we also have guys that are legitimately interested in doing this. Uh, yeah. Luke whip, Luke, um, Wipler, Whipler is a, uh, now sophomore, I guess, red shirt, freshman offensive lineman. He's really into photography. That's what he wants to do. Um, a lot of guys are interested in getting into broadcasting when they're done. So, um, we had a, a walk on that just finished up named Trayvon Wilburn that was really interested in wanting to do this. Um, so that's, what's kind of cool is get to teach them what we know, you know, obviously with NIL, we could have a whole podcast about that. Um, <laughs> but well, we might we're have trying to, to... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, with all that unknown, we're just really trying to help them get set up, try to understand, little things just here's how often you should tweet um 
here's even like check out Facebook. Like there are monetizable opportunities on Facebook because a lot yeah. of those guys aren't on there. Just little things like that to be able to then like just get to know them on a personal basis. And yeah, like be able to be out there on the field and experience those moments with them is really, really cool. But the, the other really cool part for me is to like be able to help them learn what we do and see that they're excited, not only to just watch our videos, but to potentially, you know, be able to utilize it. that in the future. Yeah. So talk about how Ohio state is, is one of the leaders in this for sure, as well as like building these players brands. And as Pat talked about, like you have these relationships with these guys from, you know, 18 to 23 or whatever it may be. And then these relationships kind of, I don't know if they die off. I know you can, you know, reach out to guys for voiceovers, for trailers or whatever it may, may be, but like you help with building their brands, creating logos, helping them on social. And then beyond that, like Ohio state hammers in the real life Wednesdays and maybe touch on, you know, what that is and, and how the football football facility. I mean, I think a lot of sports do it at Ohio state, but it's more about it's building these men and building their brands and, and, and educating them that way, um, just beyond um, X's and O's. Yeah, so, yeah, here's the NIL conversation for sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we don't need to get crazy, but, like, you yeah. guys, you guys, I mean, you help promote them. You help um, – you make these highlight videos for them or whatever it may be. Like, you're, you're, you're there to help promote their brand mm -hmm. for what it's worth. Yeah, it's – you know, NIL has been on our mind for uh, – four years probably now, you know, uh, Sam Silverman, uh, who was here when I got here, um, really kind of saw the light and was really interested in player branding. And so we utilized that for, um, try or really looked into that and really invested a lot of time into figuring out how can we, um, yeah, invest and build a brand for a player. Um, you know, Sammy would, uh, like one example is Gary on Conley. He left and, and, uh, you know, started his BIA brand and Sammy while he was at Ohio state, you know, they had conversations about how to build that brand. And then when he left, he did, you know, he created a logo and uh, Gary on did and sold t-shirts and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then as kind of NIL has, you know, grown and grown, it's right now it's less about building a player's brand. Um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with all these federal laws that are about to come out, but it's, it's pretty likely that, uh, that Ohio state and, a lot of programs aren't are, are going to have their their hands tied a little bit on what they're going to be able to actually provide a student athlete because of liability and who owns what if we create a logo at ohio state we're going to own that and so do we want to we're everyone's trying to figure out is that something that is viable or is it not and so because we don't know we've backed off a little bit on that side of yeah. things and i've really uh you know chris and i sat down beginning of 2000 20 so right before the pandemic and and really kind of looked at what our philosophy was and um i kind of said i think we need to invest more in social um and you know engagement and measuring that you know that stuff is being um skull sparks is releasing a, a graphic every week or every month saying who's number one who's number two if and if they're going to rank stuff we want for ohio state to be on the top not for our own egos but it's for I mean, recruiting i mean I mean, sure we want to. <laughs> sure, I want to win. I want to be at the top there for myself. Zach, Absolutely. I have to. Add, is is that your is that your homepage every time you open your browser? <laughs> the, the top charts of Skull Sports. <laughs> uh, no, but it's <laughs> don't lie. Um, yeah, but we want to. We you know, we want to win that for sure. But but really, it was because we saw an opportunity with Ohio State's fan base with the reach that it, it was a space that we felt like we could own and win. And and so once we kind of decided that's what we want to do. Honestly, Chris deserves a ton of credit for it because he comes from a uh, agency background, marketing background, mm -hmm. and he really uh, a lot of the strategy on social um, started from his foresight, and um, a lot of the, the actions that we took to kind of change our philosophy came from him. And then we, you know we really worked together and did a lot more. Uh, you know, Instagram Reels being launched this year really helped us. You know, change that. And so you know, going back to your original question, it's. You know, we wanted to, you know, be able to show our players that, hey, look, Ohio State's brand's pretty crazy. If you follow what we're trying to teach you, you know, then your brand, your platform can be pretty crazy, too. And, and in terms of, like, you, we mentioned Skull Sparks, and obviously it's a team effort. I think one of the things I'm most impressed with is your guys' eye for talent on the video side or the creative side, and you've had some really talented creators come through. Can you kind of just talk about what that has been like to build a team and then to see them go off? Uh, you know, to a different school or to a pro team and, and what that's like? 
yeah that's been wild like that's been really cool to look back and see now don't like, say don't say anything nice about farkas before you get going <laughs> well literally everybody except for justin law went to los angeles i'm pretty sure that's right and sammy sammy went clubs. to new york but Durani, yeah i guess yeah, my full, he's, a, oh, my he's a student guys. he's a student yeah yeah, yeah you're so right. yeah my full-time guys uh yeah, Ke- uh, Kenton Stufflebeam did our recruiting graphics when I got here. He left and is now working for CAA out in Anaheim, I think. Um, Farkas went to the Chargers back home. Andre went to the Clippers. Uh, Jacob Brown was with USC there for a little bit after he went to LSU. Uh, and then Justin Laws at South Carolina. And uh, is that everybody? I think so. Juan's here. Juan and Corey and, and Chris. Deroney. Yeah, Deroney's up with the Rangers and – We've had I've had some other students go off and do some other things too. So, yeah, that's like it's pretty crazy because they keep leaving me like really fast, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. That's exactly what we want. Um, yeah, it's just been, it's been really cool, you know, seeing their skill sets grow. Like like Justin Law, I always talk about him. Like he didn't have a Twitter, he didn't yeah. tweet before he came here, and we were Alex and I were kind of like, you should probably like utilize that it'll help you might might be a good idea yeah yeah and then he did he like both both he and alex they like you know they came in with a pretty good skill set and um and then left just with like a ridiculous ridiculous um amount of talent and they you know we talk about like pushing each other they um you know justin's pretty quiet and you know farkas is pretty outgoing so i wouldn't say they like they never like bantered back and forth or anything, but they, you could, it was there was all a, done through edits. Yeah. It was <laughs> definitely like a, like Justin made something really good. So Alex felt like he really wanted to make something better. And then Justin would see that. And it was like a really healthy, really good competitive environment here that, and they just like created really good stuff and they both obviously got really good jobs out of it. So um, you're sitting here like the mastermind, like my, my job is <laughs> it's, it's coming to fruition. What, yeah, is, what do you look for do when you They just sit over here they and they create nuts. really cool stuff. And I look back <laughs> and I'm like, I have I have no comments. It's great. Just post yeah, it. Just, you guys, <laughs> I've got nothing. What are, like when you're uh, looking to hire these guys, because like you said they're turning over so quickly. What is your? I mean, wh- I mean, we don't need to go crazy SMS real quick, but like, what do you, what are you looking for? Because I mean, I know Farkas and like you said, Farkas came in and so, same with Justin. Like, definitely great at what they do but they just took off at their time in Ohio State. I mean, part of that is probably your leadership and, and how much time they have to spend doing editing videos and, and all that stuff. But from your hiring perspective, what are you looking for? Uh, it depends on the, sp- <clears throat> excuse me, the, the specific position. But, you know, when I'm hiring a video spot, um, like you got to have talent. Obviously, you got to uh, understand the basics and know how to use the cameras and, and all of that. But, you know, I found that um, – you know, if, if I'm looking at your portfolio and it's not up to Ohio state standards, that's, you're going to get there. Like you're going to force, you're going to be forced to get there. Yeah. Not like by me looking over your shoulder, but just the expectation the of being the in this building. And yeah. it's just kind of like in the air, like, and it, and you want to do it. You know, you go to the, you're part of the workouts, you're part of the, the meetings, you know, you're in the locker room, you're building for something. You got to walk by seven Heisman trophies on the way in. Every exactly. Day. Yeah. So <laughs> you're like, you realize like one, like this is a really cool opportunity. Like that was what happened to me at least was, you know, I always, I obviously had the Ohio state thing, but when you're just in the building and you're like, wow, like not only is my work probably going to be seen if I do a good job, my resume is going to build, but also like we have a shot to, you know, go shoot a national championship every year. You, you kind of just feel driven to want to be a part of that. And uh, so the reason I say that is that that's really what I look for. Like I want somebody that at least for, I, I kind of took this from coach Meyer coach Meyer always kind of wanted coaches to stay for at least a couple years. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, after that it was like, yeah, I'll, I hope you go wherever you want to go. And I really kind of take that here. Like I'm never going to force anybody to stay and I'm always going to help you. If you have a great opportunity, you're always, I want you to go and I'm going to help yeah. you get there. But for me, it was like, I want you to be able to put everything you have into this for two years. It's, it's college football. It's a grind, uh, not, unlike the football coaches and the players and the strength staff, you know, they, that that's what they're built for. Like, that's what they love is yeah. grinding and being here and fighting and all that stuff. And I don't think a lot of creators necessarily, that's not like what drives them innately is to like 
win football games and to work 15 hours a day. Like that's make cool not, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, there burnout's real, like for, for people, like, you know, during the season we're working coaches hours and we're putting in a lot of work and not a whole lot of time for personal life. So for me, it's, what's the year like though? You're like your, your whole year. So like, obviously football season is, is wild. So talk about that and then go into, you know, we're expected to make the natty or the CFP, CFP natty. There's the Heisman stuff. There's, you know, that's becoming the norm, at least being there. Right. And then there's the draft and spring ball and everything that goes into it. Obviously your year is, is busier, but I feel like from the overall fan perspective, they don't know, they don't know how hard you're grinding. Like I, you log some hours. I lived with Farkas when he was working with you and this man would come in late night, like, Oh my God, man. And he's up early before I'm up. And he's gone, and, you know, I, I love barely seeing him. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, like, you're grinding. And people don't people don't know that. Like, your videos are unreal. That's a given. The trailers, the whatever. Like, you, you spend time doing this stuff. It doesn't just happen. Yeah, it does take a lot of time during the season. And, and honestly, a lot of the time. So we do a lot of internal stuff for the team as well. And um, that during the season, that's probably what Al, uh, Farkas and I really probably spent the, spent the most time on was videos for the team to watch um going in you know to the game on saturday friday there's a few games going on um and so we coaches are really invested we want to we want to give a visual that that goes along with what the coaches are preaching uh what their message is for the week and those take a long time you know we i've put a, i learned from my predecessor um uh, dave trichelle who was here and that was really what he did we were two separate departments when i got here he was the post-production department hence that part of my title that <laughs> still exists um uh, but what post-production meant was yeah he worked with coach meyer on on leadership development um and it was a whole separate department and so i watched him really put a lot of time and effort into that and so we're spending hours and hours building that on top of the social media stuff so yeah it's we're here coaches hours essentially during the season. Um, I got a couple more for you. The, I think, you know, like we said, you set the standard, um, and what you do and like what drives you personally, like the, the, your competitiveness, your drive, like you said, you, you check out other people's stuff, you know, what's going on. Um, but like, what, what do you want when you wake up in the day and in the morning? Like what, what do you, what are you striving for along those lines? Yeah, that honestly, that changes every year. Um, when I first got here, I'd say what it, I, I was really driven to uh, to kind of get my name out there to let people know who I was to kind of like build my, uh, you know, brand and, and online resume a little bit, um, as well as um, just like being a part of the, the culture. And like I want I just kind of wanted to f feel like I was part of the Ohio State football team, like whatever their success was, like I wanted to know as much you know meet as many people as in the program get to know as many players as possible that really drove me um and then probably you know as i once i took over kind of both the roles of um, the motivational stuff and the social media I, I was really driven to win like to help the team it was for me like it was probably there were a couple of years and they were like my main goal was do whatever it takes for this team to win games you know i want to make as many motivational videos as i can i want to uh find uh, different ways to, you know, put, uh, to teach these guys, uh, the leadership skills that we, that we preach to them, figure out ways throughout the facility to, to give messaging, to constantly get it into their head. Like I wanted to have an impact on the field, however that was, however small yeah. it was. Um, and I wanted to go to a national championship. Like I really, <laughs> I wanted to play in a national championship. I wanted to win a national championship and I wanted to like basically put in as many hours as it took to do that. Um, uh, and now, you know, with, with NIL and, you know, being here, this, this, you know, coming up will be my sixth season. Um, it's kind of changed. I've kind of stepped back and kind of looked like, you know, last year we've, we, uh, we made the national championship, you know, we beat Clemson, um, you know, two things that we really oh, yeah, wanted, we, did. we really wanted to accomplish. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And obviously we lost that game, uh, that last game. Um, but, you know, I kind of look back and it was like, you know, what's the next you know, what's the next thing? We have a lot of opportunities here. And, and so I'd say now, like the biggest thing is, is helping prepare the student, help prepare the student athletes for, for NIL. And like, I really feel like we have, 
a really cool opportunity to like give them something to give them a skill set just like trainers in the building help them i feel like we can really help them um and then it's it's also just kind of trying to take a step back a little bit and let the people in my office grow and and create as well and kind of be a part of the culture um so for me it's it's about helping our students you know letting juan and chris and corey do their thing and um kind of kind of have more of a three thousand foot view as much as i can and and help those guys grow can you again as a michigan fan i have to ask you a question <laughs> about these trailers can you chill out on the trailers please because they're uh they're a little too good but what what is it actually like to script those see it from pre-production to completion how satisfying is it knowing that you're having a direct impact because i think non-creatives don't fully understand that a creative can impact a program and help a program win games and what is that like to actually work work so many hours on that and to see that you know fully come to fruition yeah it is really rewarding it's really it's really a cool feeling and especially me just you know growing up columbus being ohio state fan it's kind of like surreal but also when you're working all those hours it's you're on auto you get to be on autopilot a little bit because you're just there's no time to sit back and think or, or reflect you're you know what you got to do and you got to you know you got to make the videos but um you know once you know sitting back and and looking at it like at the end of the year it's kind of like wow that was really cool what we got to be a part of um and not just kind of sit back and watch but you know to have you know coach day and coach meyer and position coaches and players like you know we would last year we made a lot of videos for the defense and this year we kind of we lost a full-time position and so we kind of had to take a step back and do a few less of the motivational videos for the team and the players were like i, I didn't even like I, I didn't even think anything would that they would even notice and they were like where's the damn defense video on friday like, I was <laughs> like wow like that's crazy that you even like remembered that but, yeah um so that's cool and and it, yeah the the trailers like i've been doing those now for you know, I've done them for three or four years here at Ohio State and did them for a few years at Arkansas. And so those are like a challenge, not – it's a challenge because you got to make those it different. those in your sleep. <laughs> you got to make it different than the last one. And um, well, how's, yeah, it, how's it harder uh, – or what's the – what's it like – what do you – what is your mindset? I know you said you focus on like the week-to-week -week message, but like what goes into that? Yeah, like the – yeah, the, kind of the mid the mid-season games where – you know, obviously every game in college, the cool thing is in college football is that every game is important. Like, so people are going to care. So yeah. you're not just like making something to make something. Um, but For yeah, sure. like when you're in the middle of the season and um, if you, you know, you're not like playing for a gold pants, you're not playing to clinch the East, you're not playing. It's like, what is that message? Yeah. Um, and so the message, you know, we always have a message to the team every week. and Because um, we're always winning. <laughs> These guys aren't. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> it's like yeah you just kind of have to take what and you have to do it fast too because again the trailer's one of we're probably producing six you know six pretty long form videos including the um the stuff we do for the team internally every week and so we got to go like there you know i really enjoy doing the trailers but like if that was my only thing i had to do every week i think they 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 could be much better they would have uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> they would have a more of a they would have more of a story i would say yeah. you know we kind of have to uh, it, it, if you look at, if you watch them, it's, it's a formula, you know, it's the same formula. It's, it's titles, it's finding the right shots on the right beats. It's f using whatever, um, great lines that we filmed the coaches talk about, you know, the week before a different song, you know, that song is always where we start. Um, and, and each week has a different feel, you know, like the team up North is always going to be like, just really hardcore ass kicking. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that that kind of music and then yeah. you know the the playoff games are going to be more of like a slow build up kind of a storytelling and then the games in the middle are going to be somewhere in between and so once you kind of have that the you got to realize too like the audience for the most part is going to feel the difference even though you know us creators and sometimes it's kind of hard to re like remember that like to me, kind of all those videos kind of feel the same, but I still yeah. think the fans, the people that are watching it, still feel a little bit of difference in, um, in the storyline, and that's really ultimately what's important for that stuff is making sure that the end viewer feels something. And so, 
I, I really tried this year to put less pressure on like trying to find something new and kind of go back to the basics where like these, like in the past years, I tried to like tell stories and do kind of crazy stuff. And this year I was like, no, these are called the trailers. Like, so it's a movie trailer. So like I, I went back to the basics, like titles, quotes, uh, you know, flomo clips and, and you try to change it up a little bit, Yeah. but I, I found that the, the reactions and the people watching the video liked that a lot more than what I was trying to do in the past. So yeah, um, I know people are refreshing their timelines on Thursday, waiting for that to drop. <laughs> that's for sure. It was, um, it was yeah, it was nuts. I got a, I got a quick uh, question about that process too. At what what point in the process do you call up LeBron James and John Legend <laughs> and, and ask for the voiceover? <laughs> Speed uh, dial. We, we like we always have a list of like you know in Ohio State fans that are influencers or famous or whatever that we want to reach out to for something. I'm here. Yeah, I mean, we you have a great voice. <laughs> He's available. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, like, we've obviously always wanted to involve LeBron, and we've wanted to involve John Legend and uh, uh, J.K. Simmons, another guy that, you know, we've always wanted to get involved, and hopefully he's listening to Still Eligible. So, J.K., season opener next year. Um, loved Whiplash. Um, <laughs> and the and the, the, far, the commercials, Farmers... Uh, Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah um but yeah with with that you know it, it felt like you know this year felt like the right time it was like this was a crazy year like crazy we're, like there's no reason not to do anything like we're gonna try and so with uh with lebron uh ryan stamper who just left to go to the the jaguars who was our uh, director of player development you know he has he has a lot of contacts uh just you know across columbus and across country and um he he had initial contact for uh, for some of LeBron's guys, and so we we sent some emails to see if he'd be interested, and didn't really hear back. And and so finally, I uh, I actually texted Coach Meyer, and I just said, Hey, look, we really want to get LeBron. I know you know they're really close, and said, Hey, would you mind just reaching out, and see if he'd be interested? And actually, Coach Meyer got a hold of him, and that was actually what sealed the deal for getting LeBron. We worked with his his people, and uh, they sent over. I sent him the script, and probably got uh, his voiceover back in two or three days after the script was sent, which was pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah. Coach Meyer. I don't know if you listened to the podcast where I talked about my first experience meeting coach Meyer, but it was one of the most horrific things in my life. We had like this awkward handshake, but I heard, yeah. um, yeah, it was horrible. We don't need to bring that back up, <laughs> but I know that you and your wife have had separate encounters. If you like, <laughs> um, like, I mean, everyone's, I feel like every, like Farkas told me about his first time meeting urban and it was, I think he was like stuffing his face with food or something. It was just like everyone has this moment with Urban where it's like, God, he saw me at my worst. So, you want to care to sh care to share those at all? Um, yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, I'll start. So, actually, actually, uh, Hannah, my wife's, she actually used to work across the street as a GA on on the tenth floor up uh, at the Fawcett Center, which is our main athletic department building. Um, just kind of helping out with different things, and I think her first time. Uh, actually meeting coach Meyer, she was working the front desk and uh, she had a mouthful of water when he came in and asked, uh, I think it was if Jean, you know, was available or something. And, and uh, she like coughed, like spit out the water kind of like, <laughs> cause she was just full of water and it, it looked like she was like starstruck as it was coach Meyer, but it was yeah. more of just like that she turned and maybe a little bit of like, yeah, caught him oh, off, crap. Caught him like, off but, yeah. but I feel like that isn't, that's like, he's got like this aura that just, I don't know. Things just happen like that, but uh, I think it's yeah, either my... that or he just waits for the worst possible moment <laughs> I think it's to, that. Come, to come meet. You. I think he's just waiting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, our favorite story that we tell about Hannah was the you know we would always every summer uh, he would host a all the players would go over to Zimbizi Bay, the big water park here in Columbus, and then yeah. would drive down the road to Coach Meyer's house. He had a big pool in his backyard, and he'd have a little pool party for the whole team. And so I I was up there, and and Hannah came and met us, and she you know, pulled up and parked and, um, you know, coach Meyer's house is big and beautiful. And, uh, you know, I, t she said, I'm here and didn't know exactly where to go. So I walked out to the front and, uh, and met Hannah and she was walking in and it had like rained the night before, I guess, but it was a beautiful day that day. And so she was just like, Hey, and I'm like, Oh, don't go that way. You know, you come this way, but it was too late. She stepped and she like sunk like ankle deep in mud and just had mud everywhere. <laughs> 
And so she's like, wow, this is my first time at Coach Meyer's house. Great impression. Uh, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, we're just, you're going to have to live like that, I guess. And so we walked, and she's like, <laughs> you know, like there's a pool. Like, there's a dunk in the pool. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we're like, kind of like, we're walking in, and, you know, I, my coworkers are there and some players and stuff, and they're like trying to say, hey. And she's just like searching for the hose in this, you know, gigantic, oh beautiful gosh. house that she can't find the hose. And so she like, I don't think she actually ended up getting it all off on the pool, but I think she did find a hose somewhere or had to ask for a hose. So that was, it's just always something kind of crazy. Uh, oh my God. That's awesome. And what about you? Belichick? I, I remember the Belichick story. Yeah. So we have every once in a while, you know, we have a, a team up North period where we, uh, you know, put on the, the videos. Uh, we have, you know, a lot of Team Up North highlight videos, we'll put those on in the background, just kind of motivate the guys, just kind of remind them, hey, look, this rivalry is really important. And so there's a video that plays every time with Time for War on it. And once we go into the period, it's a big deal. You know, guys are on, there's horns blaring and stuff, and everybody's getting, you know, hyped up. And I went to go play the video, and the computer froze. Um, well, this wasn't just any other practice. This was right around pro day, and we had a ton of NFL coaches were there. Coach Belichick was there, and – you could tell just Coach Meyer wanted practice to go really well, and I didn't check the computer before practice. It had always just played just fine, but that day it crapped out, of course. And, uh, man, I just got called to the front, and he, you know, was just like, what the heck? And I, we're standing on the block O just in front of practice. All the players are, like, waiting for the period to start, and that was bad. That was That was my fault for not being prepared. <laughs> um, when, coach, when coach Belichick was there to make sure that the video actually played when I hit play. Uh, Cause in that scenario, you can't just be like the computer froze, you know, they're like, figure it out, test the video. You know? Yeah. So that was hundred percent my fault, but well, I good, learned. Yeah. The good thing is he's a very uh, understanding and, you know, not super intense guy. So I'm sure, <laughs> sure it was uh, both big, of them, yeah, yes. urban and Belichick. They're just, they're just killers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so cool we want to, yeah. Sorry about that. We oh no. We want to use this opportunity. You're a first guest. Uh, we're gonna start asking a final a final question, and then we have another part directly after that. But you're the first one we're ever asking it to. So if you could go to any sporting event, where would you go? What would it be? To any sporting event, it would probably be honestly for me, it'd be the World Series with the Red Sox in it. Um, I've been to a lot of college football games, and uh, I could use to go sit in the stands and watch my favorite baseball team play in the World Series. I had a feeling you were going to say that. I teased it. I was <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what his answer is going to be. I just know he's a Red Sox guy. So yep. Yep. there we go. I, I can't predict everyone. There's no way. But I'm one for one. We'll roll yep. with that. Yeah. Oh, man, 100%. There we go. Um, all right, so last thing. Um, we do this thing. It's called I'll Leave You With This. And basically what it is is we tell some sort of story, whether it's funny or just a cool story that we've been a part of because we feel like you know, we're trying to, to talk to fans, talk to people that don't have the the background that we do, right, where we, we kind of take some stuff for granted and, and being a part of all these cool games and traditions, whatever it may be. Um, and I told I told the story about working out with Chase. I told the story about working out as a loose term, working out with Chase, uh, the Urban being Meyer the gym, one, yeah. whatever <laughs> it may be. Um, we kind of teed you up for this. But do you, have, do you have a good story you can share with us that we can leave the folks on? Um, for this excellent first interview. Yeah, well, we definitely have to talk about a Team Up North game for sure. So before I get into my actual story that we discussed a little bit, I, I got to ask Pat, like, was the spot good or not? Oof. I mean, no. no I Like, that it. was not a first down. <laughs> <laughs> the little ziggly, you're like the ziggly line guy that, like, goes around I mean, the ball. I mean, <laughs> not, not a math guy, uh, but I – that that math did not. <laughs> I made this video out. sidebar. I made this video for Giant Eagle when I was at Ohio State, and uh, the the guy that like his handles marketing and whatnot for Giant Eagle like is full of ideas. He's he's the man. And he, <laughs> we had JT, and we were doing this home delivery video, and he's like, I got this idea. So what we're gonna do is like we're gonna pull up in the parking lot. We're going to pull up across the line and JT's going to get out and just give the first down signal. <laughs> and it was so funny. We, we like, we did that. And like, I think he was like, I'm good now. We don't need anything else. We got it. But yes, we, back to you. <laughs> we, you know, we, we actually have a, uh, a very similar video with uh, JT and some other players uh, surrounding that theme that has never been released. So we might have to, uh, leak it. Have still to eligible. That, leak so. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. There we go. Um, but yeah, I think, I think a fun story to end on this, 
would be the 2017 team up north versus Ohio State game at the big house. Uh, a, guy, a little guy named Dwayne Haskins came in and ended up winning the game in the second half. But uh, before the game, something pretty crazy happened. Um, I know you guys probably remember. So I'll just tell it from my perspective. So, yeah. you know, we're on the field and every pregame, you know, we have, you know, we know where guys are and, and what they're going to do. And we kind of have our plan as, as videographers about where we're going. Um, where we need to be. And so I always run out, get the coin toss. And then as soon as that coin toss is done, I kind of follow the players off and I run uh, to switch lenses, uh, put my camera on our hi hat and then go get set for kickoff, which, you know, usually is probably a, I maybe have 90 seconds, two minutes, maybe to, you know, run over there, get changed, get set up and get ready to go. Uh, and so, you know, JT is the captain and he, turns around from the coin toss and I'm following off. I got a great shot at 180 frames a second. You know, he's running <laughs> off the field, like beautiful. Oh, you don't know, get the, me going, bro. Yeah, the beautiful symmetric uh, big houses in the background and it's mm -hmm. great. I'm like, okay, so I, I bail, I run to grab my, uh, go grab my hi-hat and, you know, that probably takes, you know, whenever I do that, I, I leave, I, I, I grab a big lens, I put a, uh, like an eyepiece on my camera um, and then I uh, put the camera on the hi-hat. So that takes, I don't know, 30, 35 seconds, grab my stuff, go to the sideline. I always try to kind of go right down the line for kickoff before kicking off. And, uh, I'm sitting on the sideline and they're like, the coaches are like, JT's hurt. I'm like, he's hurt. I was just behind him like, running <laughs> off the field. Like, what are you talking about? I, don't, I thought they were kidding or like, maybe there was another JT. Like, I'm like, like who cares about the other on? JT? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And, uh, yeah, so as everyone knows, it turned out that he got hit by a cameraman, obviously, like because he was sidelines there, notoriously tight, uh, especially for that game. There's a lot Very of people tight. down there, and so he was warming up behind the bench, and a camera guy ran by him and hit the leg. But that was crazy. But I, after the game, I looked at my phone and I had like 35 text messages from people like, "Did you kill JT? Oh Did you gosh. break JT's leg? <laughs> Were you the cameraman?" And I was like, I honestly didn't know. I was like thinking back, like. Did I, was I hit him? him? Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I know I was close to him, like, around that time, but I'm pretty sure I didn't hit our starting quarterback. And uh, I asked him at halftime. I was like, what happened? And he told me, you know, he told a lot of people there that it was another guy, but game ended, and uh, we all heard what happened. But that week, actually, Andre Robinson, who's still here, took it upon himself to go look at all the angles from <laughs> we get the melt, you know, we got the game footage, and he's, like, trying to figure out, like, was We're this an undercover this operator that like went to take <laughs> out JT? Like who was it? And I think he eventually found the clip of the guy. And I think just like I'm hurrying, it was, it was some guy that was just trying to get to the other side of the field, you know, really fast and didn't see the all time leading all time winner at Ohio <laughs> state standing there before the biggest game of the year. So yeah, no big deal. It's just another game. <clears throat> no, it's the game. Well, Zach, this has been awesome. We appreciate you. We couldn't have done this without you. We're happy to have you as our first guest. Um, I, I know that you do great work and, and we want to highlight people that do great work. And, uh, I could talk about you for days. It was great having you on, uh, the director and creative media and post-production of Ohio state football is, is the title. And, uh, we can't thank you enough, Pat. You want to say something nice to our, our guy from Ohio state football? You know, Zach, it's been a pleasure. I can look past the team that you work for, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of your work and I really appreciate you being a guest. So thanks a lot. We'll have yeah, to do really this again. Yeah, definitely. Really appreciate you guys. And, you know, shout out to everybody on my team that makes us look really good because uh, there's a lot of talented people out there, but we got some really hard workers out there. So appreciate you guys letting me highlight them a little bit. Absolutely. All right, man. We'll talk soon. Thanks. All right. See you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Still eligible. We release new episodes of the podcast every Thursday. We haven't told you enough. We appreciate you. Until next week, follow us on social at Still Eligible. See you then. How about that? That was a, that was a great first interview. We filmed this like three hours afterwards, but we're gonna act like it just rolled right into it. It's the joy of editing. Boom. Zach Swartz, absolute beast. I love having him on. Insight through the roof. Good dude. Good dude. Great content creator, even better friend. Boom. So, we started with my guest, guest of choice. Absolute home run. What, what are you going to do? How are you going to Are you going to let me have a, a guess? 
I'm allowing you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, next week we got Jared Freed, stand up comedian, host of the J Train podcast, brother of Harry Freed. Oh, Harry Freed's brother, yes. Jared Freed. Yes. Freed. Yeah. Former Michigan lacrosse teammate. So yeah, we'll have him on. Might give us some relationship advice. Could help us. God knows we need it. Yeah. And uh term- we, I mean you. Yes. Hundred percent. Good episode. Great episode. Kind of arguably my favorite. Because we really? had someone else talking so much that we yeah, had heard less of you. Very, very important point. We uh, talked about our, our our snow day. Led to our TikTok. That's still eligible. Please follow us. Talked about watching the Michigan-Ohio State game together. Can you remind me who won that game? I forget. What else did we talk about today, uh, We talked about, gave some appreciate yous. Shouted out Juwan Howard. What else did we talk about Clubhouse, today, Max Homa. And then you had a take back, actually. So, yeah. Well, Punk's Tony Phil is dead to me. And then we we had we chopped it up with Zach. I I learned a lot. Uh, I'm impressed by what he does and what his team does, and would love to have him on again as a guest. Yeah, no, he he does he does need to come on. Can he just come on the second? Should he just come on the second episode? Just (laughs) Just have one every every episode. episode? No, I think the coolest part about that, and I think what we're trying to do is is highlight these people that are actually making these videos and taking these photos, right? Like, we want to have players on here. We want to have coaches, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, these people are – they're actual people too. And they're out here grinding. They're out here working, Con- logging hours. Content creators are people too. Yeah, people don't know that. We've got this weird little sub-world of people. It is – it's it's wild. If you like, follow us on Twitter, if you look at who I follow on Twitter, it's like – I don't know. It's like this weird world of people. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't know it existed. Not weird. Before I mean, Eddie's weird, but I love you. I, di- I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know it existed before our previous job. So on, it man. is. It is pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. <laughs> no, I. I think. Uh, I think that's a. That's a good summary. And something else I would love to talk about, honestly, uh, at this point, is. Uh, you know. Let me think for a second. I think that's it. I was supposed to get you. Yeah, that's why I said that. And this is episode five <laughs> of the Still Eligible podcast. We appreciate you tuning in and listening. It was a good episode if you, if, if I do say so myself. Yeah. All right, fade to music. Wow. Editing on the fly. <laughs>